a month and a year and five years. I personally, I personally don't want to be in the same spot mentally, professionally, personally. I want to keep growing and expanding. And I believe if I had to summarize it, it's the same for you guys. So when I think of what that means or how to do that, I really focus on this word movement. And that's what today is all about. How am I doing the things today that are going to propel me into the future? How are they going to expand my perspective, help me grow as a person, grow as a human, as a friend? And so everything that we're going to do today is all focused around movement, starting with social movement, so social change. So we're going to have a community voices panel um, with these lovely ladies, but I'll let them introduce themselves. And community voices is JD's response to ongoing social action and social change. So every week for uh, almost three years now, we've done weekly episodes where we're providing education, funding, and visibility to underrepresented communities in America. So we've hit off on all different communities. This week we're focusing on dance, and I'm so excited to have this conversation with these ladies and how they've overcome obstacles and how they're using the movement to propel themselves into better people and better humans. Afterwards, feel free to grab a drink, mingle. Um, we have a photo booth. If you guys stop by these two mannequins, um, you can scan the QR code and we'll hook you guys up with those outfits. We have some shoes, and then over in the corner, which I'm super excited about, is a permanent bracelet station. So we partnered with a local company. That's going to be your commitment to movement and your commitment to change. So when you think of that permanent bracelet, or when you look at that permanent bracelet, I want you guys to think of what's actually going to propel you guys into the future, into growth, and into that ongoing growth mindset. So, with that, I want to pass it to Melody and enjoy. Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today for this JD Sports and Nike Need and Now panel, Community Voices. Today, we're going to be honoring International Women's Day by speaking with some inspirational women from the dance world. And we'll get started with some brief introductions before we start. First, we have Kayla. Can you give us a brief intro? Hi, y'all. Um, my name is Kayla Marie G. I was born with a limb difference. I am a signed model, dancer, and teacher based in NYC. Hi, everyone. Good morning. My name is Omika Jakaria. I'm one of the three Jakaria sisters. Hi, I'm Ashika. And I'm Rishika. We are a sister trio originally from Brooklyn, New York, and we are first generation Indian American, so a lot of our dances that we create combine our Indian and American identities. <laughs> so we're gonna get started with some questions. I'm excited to learn more about you guys and what you're doing for the community. We'll start by what positive changes towards equity have you witnessed within your world? That's the dance world. That is a loaded question. Um, so personally for me, I love seeing that more people are being embraced in the dance space where you get to see different types of bodies and feel connected through that. So I love seeing that inclusion happen and being part of that. Sure. Uh, so for us, we, as Rashida mentioned, we grew up in New York City. We're first generation Indian American and Growing up, we felt like we sort of had to pick between our Indian or American identities in the dance world, so we train in both types of styles. And over time, uh, especially in the past few years, we've really been able to combine our different styles, and we've seen people be really open to fusion movement in the dance world, and that's really cool to see people embracing different types of cultures and uh, dance styles, so that's been really cool uh, to see that becoming more equitable in the dance world. And you mentioned, mentioned movement specifically. What about movement and moving inspires you to do what you do? Yeah. Um, so movement is really our way to connect with each other, with community, to express ourselves. And when we think about movement and dance, we think of it as a way to express that which we cannot express through words. Uh, so movement is this really powerful form of communication and expression that brings us all together and allows us to, to express our feelings and emotions in a really deep way. Um, so we're really thankful to be able to have that outlet because we know that not everybody has that. Uh, so it's really amazing to, to have movement to do that. 
Yeah, just to quickly add to that, I think growing up being in the South Asian American community, it was often, um, we were often told you should you know, pursue a professional career and go into academics and um, being an engineer, but also being a dancer on social media and in this professional space, um, I can't live without movement. Movement is so important to me. I have a professional career in corporate America, but I also find so much importance in movement and I cannot live every day without having that movement in my life. So dance is just so important to the three of us and I hope that we can just share that with the world and continue to share that on social media with the, the larger community. Also for me, I, I predominantly dance in heels, so I love being able to express that femininity, your sensuality and your sexuality. Um, especially in this day and age, we have come so far, but there's a certain line that we're not allowed to cross, uh, dictated by society, and I think it's so important to be able to express your boundaries and your storytelling through movement. Um, it's so important to be able to just express yourself fully without having to worry about what society thinks of you, and that's a way to do so through dance. I love that, amazing. How has the community embraced you and motivated you to continue what you're doing and advocate? Any specific examples or things you want to talk about on that? Yeah, so we, we have grown up dancing together and in 2020 during the pandemic when we were brought together during lockdown is when we started posting our dance videos on social media and we started to connect with the larger South Asian community and dance community on social media. And something that we always talk about amongst the three of us is that any relationship that you build with any member of the community has to be symbiotic. It shouldn't be transactional. And keeping that in mind, we've been able to build really meaningful and powerful um, relationships with folks in the South Asian community, in the dance community generally. We've been able to work on various voting initiatives, um, women's initiatives, and even attend the White House to celebrate Diwali, which was an amazing experience. And I think that having people who will be in your corner and support you and be your sponsor when you need them most is um, really important and something that we value a lot. So we feel very lucky and very grateful to have that support and that love from uh, the people who enjoy seeing what we do as much as we love doing it. And Kayla, how about you and your community? I'm gonna bring it back to 2020 as well because I feel like that was a life-changing year. Um, for me, that's when I started to teach and really connect with people that way. Um, I was always afraid to teach before 2020, but it made me realize how much I loved dance because the studio space was taken away at that time and you couldn't physically be with people. Um, and it made me really appreciate being in a space with people and connecting with people that way. And 2020 was that year where you really had to reflect on your emotions and who you were as a person and dance when it came back and into that studio space you were able to really connect with people through movement and see their stories and feel their emotions even if you couldn't relate specifically to what that was but you all understood like what that emotion can feel like for yourself um, so in essence for me community was so important at that time and being able to continue to strengthen that throughout the years now in 2023 and teaching in different places and uh, going to different states like California or different countries like Italy, Paris, and being able to teach there and connect with different people in that way of storytelling and their own emotions is honestly a really beautiful thing that I'm able to experience and thankful for because of community love to hear about this um, it's been like you all said uh, a few years of growth I know we have all learned uh, learned and grown a lot about ourselves throughout the pandemic going into 2023 two of you have personal commitments ways that you are looking forward and growing and learning more about yourself specifically the biggest thing for me in 2023 is going back to my roots and going back to the studio going back to training I think in 2020 we were kind of stripped of the ability to perform in front of an audience. And I think that that really took a toll on the three of us. Um, so the past couple of years, it's been amazing to be back in front of an audience, be back on social media and like really perform and get that love from 
other people enjoying what we do. So 2023, it's kind of good to take a step back, go back to the roots and really focus on myself, focus on my training and then continue to go from there because that's where it all starts. It starts in the studio. For me, it's to not self-select out of opportunities. I think that as women and women of color, we don't see a lot of representation. We don't see people that look like us in positions of leadership and in those decision-making positions. Um, and it's easy to you know, have imposter syndrome overcome you and question your abilities and, and make you doubt yourself. Um, and I know that in the past that those feelings have often you know, resulted in me self-selecting out of opportunities, telling myself that I'm not good enough. But this year, the goal is to start questioning those self-imposed limiting beliefs and try to push back against those narratives that simply aren't true. I guess for me, 2023 is refinding my passion in a different way. Um, sometimes you can feel a little stagnant, which is, you know, it happens. So for me, I'm trying to find different ways to re-fall in love with dance. I love dance so much, but sometimes you need to kind of remind yourself how it all started. So for me, it's like rediscovering myself that way, taking different classes, or even teaching in different spaces to just reconnect and meet different people. And on top of that, I love being able to make an impact, how, no matter how small it may be. So I love being able to go to different places and just kind of see that kind of ripple change that kind of happens over time, just within an hour and a half. Um, and I hope to continue to do so in like different States. Like for me, I'm terrified. I'm honestly super terrified to teach outside of my comfort zone, which is New York City. So pushing myself to do that um, is a lot because again, like you don't see someone like me doing that. Um, but you should because everyone deserves to be in a space where they are allowed to follow their passions without being afraid. So I want to be able to kind of break that barrier for people and myself. And you mentioned your passions a little. Can you all speak to me about what motivates you and what you do in your work, in your life, just in general? What motivates you? What really motivates me is being an example for other people, especially for my younger self. I wish that when I was growing up, especially in New York City, being first generation, I had seen other people who were pursuing multiple paths, like Ashika mentioned, uh, being able to pursue different passions, whether that's in corporate America or in dance. Um, and really helping people see that there are multiple avenues out there to pursue. You don't have to stick yourself into a box or just say, okay, I have to do this one thing for the rest of my life. Um, so really exploring and expanding for myself so that other people who are in my shoes when I was younger uh, could do the same when they get older. I can't echo that enough. It's so important to you know show young women, boys, at anyone just that they have options they can do whatever they want whatever they want to pursue and I think again going back to my younger self I was being told that I couldn't do certain things and I couldn't pursue dance professionally so I think that it's so important to to be that voice for the younger generation and show people that it's possible and I would just add spreading joy I think that dance is such a powerful way to spread joy and happiness and we really experienced that in 2020 during a time that was just so, it was just so uncertain and there was so much fear and um, sadness during that time. So being able to spread joy and happiness and connecting with people um, in meaningful ways is what really drives me. I guess for me, what motivates me is being able to create a path that hasn't been created before. Um, and it's scary sometimes too, because you don't know what's allowed, what's not allowed, if this is okay, but at the same time, creating a path means that you get to test different things, um, which is so motivating because you get to start this pathway for other people to follow, which is so beautiful, and at the same time, see how it motivates them to create their own path. And I think it's always important to remember that no matter what you're passionate about, that you're allowed to be the first person to create that path or break that barrier. Um, and I think that's so important because I had to figure out what made me, I guess in essence, like special to do that. 
but all in all, it's just like my passion, and everyone has that, so everyone deserves to have that right to kind of follow whatever path they want to create for themselves, even if it's the first time doing it. And how would you say that being in an underrepresented group within dance has helped fuel your movement? Yeah, no, again, going back to the point of people telling me I can't do certain things. Um, in So growing up, we actually started in uh, classical Russian ballet. So we were the only three South Asians in a Russian ballet class in Brooklyn, New York. And it was the wildest thing. And like looking back, I just can't even believe that that was an option for us. And it was such a great opportunity to train in that. Um, but also at the same time, it came with so many challenges and struggles where people told us we couldn't become professional ballet dancers. I mean, that's not where we are right now. We are not professional ballet dancers, but um, I mean, that only fueled us to then find our passions in dance and then continue to pursue that. Um, so I think that, that when people tell me I can't do something, that's the best motivation to then go, go ahead and do it. And I'm just so happy that looking back at those experiences, that's what I was told because now I'm at this point where I've actually succeeded and pursued that career and have made dance a full-time career. So, I, yeah, I love it when people tell me I can't do things. Okay, um, so for me, Yes, you know, I'm, I'm a woman, I'm Afro-Latina, and I'm also limb different. So I'm in this group that I feel like is so small, that honestly, like when I walk into the room, I'm the only person that looks like me. Um, and that's something that I personally had to overcome throughout the years growing up. And especially like in dance, um, when I was younger, I had to kind of motivate myself to just kind of pursue it because I was honestly afraid and then also told that like I couldn't do certain things um, that you don't see people like me doing certain things and being young at the time like I listened but as I grew older and I realized how much I loved dance I was like you know what I'm gonna do it anyways and see what happens that's literally what it was like I just want to see what happens so I'm just gonna take the risk and just go for it um, and even like training as a student, you know, in different states, like I recently started training in California, in LA, and I don't know about y'all if you ever seen like those videos from LA, they're very overwhelming. Um, and I've always wanted to be in that space, but I wasn't sure personally if I could be in that space because for me, I'm not only learning choreo, I'm adapting choreo at the same time. So my brain is like moving two times faster that, than it has to in order to just kind of keep in pace with everyone else. So I always say, don't allow fear to stop you from going and doing that. Um, and on top of that, I'm the type of person that throws myself front and center. Like if I'm gonna be the only person doing it, might as well just kind of go for it all the way, you know what I mean? So, yeah. And now we have a few minutes if there are any questions for the audience. I have a question over here. You can just give your name and ask your question. Hi, my name is Sophia Bennett. First off, I want to commend you beautiful women for being up there and sharing your different stories. I would love to know how you kind of overcome um, the stigma around body image, especially when it comes to dance, because um, I've trained in, in dance for many years and I have a lot of friends that have trained in dance for many years. and the struggle in being a certain size and staying that certain size, and especially in order to dance professionally, how do you feel like you've A, overcome that and B, used your platforms in order to say, hey, I can be South Asian, right? Sorry, South Asian, you know, or hey, I can be a size two, four, or six. How do you feel like you've overcome that and use your platform to say, you know what? I am beautifully and wonderfully made the way that I am and I'm going to dance accordingly. Um, yeah, I can I can talk a little bit about that. I know that growing up doing ballet, um, I remember kind of like hitting puberty and then feeling like 
oh, I was being, my body was being commented on by my teachers of saying like, you know, you be careful not to gain weight or you don't look a certain way, you're not stick thin, so you can't be a ballerina. And I really felt upset and I always felt very conscious. And then that definitely led to a lot of, um, you know, just feelings of I don't belong here, I can't do this. And that was really frustrating, obviously. Um, I think as time has gone on, I've had to do a lot of work on feeling like I can celebrate my body to really focus on what my body can do as opposed to how it looks. Um, and that takes a lot of time. Uh, I think that as I was starting to pursue different types of dance forms, even types of Indian dance or Latin dance, I felt like I was able to kind of embrace more of my body and my sensuality. So really finding, finding those forms of dance that allow me to celebrate that a little bit more and really embrace my curves and, and all of that has been really helpful. Um, but really it takes a mindset shift to feel like, okay, this is, I'm gonna focus on what my body can do as opposed to how it looks. Um, and it's tough, but even just showing up on social media and saying, hey, you know, I don't, I, I don't have to look perfect or I can kind of allow my body to change in different ways and just showing up as I am, as we are, um, it's definitely a work in progress, but it helps to, to be able to do that. Yeah, and adding to not only what your body looks like, but then also the color of your skin. So I think in my experience, I went to a predominantly white school in the South um, for university, and I was told that because of the color of my skin, I couldn't pursue dance professionally. And this was very recently. This was right before 2020 hit. And then 2020 hit, and we started our social media career, and that's the first time I found community on social media where they told me that I can do that and I can pursue it. Um, and now, the way that I challenge back is by going to take dance classes, supporting the dance teachers that are people of color, or women of color specifically, um, bringing people that look like me to dance classes so I feel represented in those spaces and I feel comfortable performing and dancing and training. So I think that that's kind of how I combat it. I think it's still an issue and I think it's still something to work on and I try to still find uh, motivation within myself, but it's definitely been very prevalent in my life growing up. Um, and now I've used social media as a community and found people that look like me to then you know, pursue that further and further. And to add on, also perspective. Um, people are just used to one type of perspective and sometimes you just need to make them look a different way. So I always say that even if, like let's say you go to a casting call and they're looking for one specific thing, I show up anyways. Um, and most of the time I still get it. It's just they never seen someone like me before doing what they were thinking of. So once they saw that, it was like, oh, their perspective changed. So sometimes you just have to kind of go for it anyways. Yeah, it's like you believe in your perspective so much that they have to kind of consider it, and most of the time they do. Oh, another question. You can just give your name in. Hi, my name's Imani McKnight. Um, great panel, great questions also. My question to you all, I feel like you all touched on all the mental strength that's required to pursue your passion, to pursue your passion as a minority or as you know someone who is not normally seen in, the, in those spaces. Um, and so just thinking of that, mental health comes to mind. So what are some tools, resources, practices that all of you, um, I guess, bring into your personal lives, into your personal spaces, to make sure that you have what it takes to, you know, just to to face some of the challenges that you face, but to also to perform and to um, to keep that joy in what you do. So I I love that question. Uh, for me, dance and mental health go hand in hand. Uh, for me, when I dance, it helps me with my mental health. I always call it like movement therapy, especially when I teach. Um, I use that also to just help me balance because I love being able to kind of like set a tone of a focus point that you need to think about in order to just kind of connect with the movement, but also kind of fuel yourself to just feel whatever you need to feel in that moment, whether you're like sad, angry, upset, or this life experience is getting you down, um, somehow like whatever song I'm choosing for my class, um, I always say like think of a life experience that you can relate to to that message. And 
it just kind of helps you think about it. Sometimes we run away from certain things that bother us. So having a safe space to just kind of process that with movement helps so much. So that's something that I also do for myself, even if I'm a teacher, like I do the same thing within that class space and just kind of seeing everyone else do it at the same time kind of just, it makes you feel like you're not alone in the feelings that you feel, because sometimes you can. So it's nice to know that you aren't alone and you don't feel crazy for feeling the way that you feel. Yeah, I love that, having a safe space for movement and then also having a safe space where you can find that support system. I'm so glad that I get to do it with my sisters because they can you know, help me balance off ideas and make me feel a little bit better about myself when I am down. Um, so it's important finding that community and support system um, of people as well as being able to be by yourself and using movement. Um, I love using dance as movement therapy, so I yeah, I I would also say that I truly believe that our emotions are embodied. Um, so I, I utilize other types of mental health resources, like talk therapy and obviously community support, but I think there's something really special about somatic movement and therapy and really feeling things fully. Um, I think we live so much in our heads constantly, especially in New York, we're just anxious and on the go and so stressed out and we're just in our heads. And dance is one of those things that really helps me get into my body and my heart space, which we're not connected to. And um, it's, it's kind of the, one of the main tools that, that I used in order to do that, in order to be more present and in flow. Um, but it really takes a village and a slew of resources to get to that point. And it's not always easy to return to it. I mean, obviously we're you know, in Times Square right now, it's like the busiest place on earth pretty much. Um, but it's so important to really ground ourselves into our bodies and dance is amazing for that. Yeah, I was just going to say, just to be more present, um, it's really easy sometimes to feel burnt out and exhausted and I, I never like the feeling when dance feels like a chore instead of my passion and hobby. So whenever I, tr I take dance classes, either with my sisters or alone, I really, when I step into that door, I try to leave everything else outside and really focus on the class, the movement, the music, and try to connect with that as much as I can because um, as was mentioned, I feel like dance is one of the ways that I connect with my emotions through music and movement. Um, so it's like being present and embracing those feelings that you're feeling instead of just trying to push them away. Any final questions from the audience? Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I wanna thank all these women up here for continuing to elevate and inspire women all over the world. Thank you so much. Let's get to activities. Really quick, before you guys um, get started,